Hello everyone, I'm Marcus, and um, today I'm going to do a different video. Um, I don't know if many of you know this about me, but um, I'm a huge, uh, huge, huge Miami Dolphins fan. And, you know, I kind of want to just sit here and talk to you guys for a little bit about um, the Miami Dolphins as a whole. And, you know, I'm getting sick and tired of everybody, you know, bad-mouthing Tua. I mean, he's a good kid. He's a good quarterback. The stats don't lie. It's just that there's certain things in life that you can't control. And injuries are just part of the game. I mean, you look at Steve Young. He had, like, who knows how many concussions before he had retired. And he played for almost 10 years. Okay? Tua's only had two concussions. And yet we're all making a big deal about everything. Now I get it. Each person, you know, th their body responds differently to different things. And, you know, and I understand that. But one thing that a lot of people don't seem to understand is, you know, you can be um, injured. You can be healthy. It doesn't matter who it, you know, injuries can affect the best of us. You know, and to be honest with you, everybody says, oh, well, Tua isn't durable enough to be a good quarterback or to be a permanent starting quarterback in the NFL. Well, here's, let me pose this question to you. Look at Josh Allen. Josh Allen runs the football constantly and is always getting hit really, 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 really hard. And I'm going to tell you right now, if anybody is going to have a very severe injury, that could potentially be career-threatening. It'll be Josh Allen, not Tua, only because when Josh Allen plays, he plays recklessly. And yet, and yet, and yet the Bills don't seem to understand that, you know. You know, and I, and I can't stand Buffalo. I've, I've never liked Buffalo. I don't like New England either. I don't like both of those teams, but I can tolerate New England over Buffalo. But, you know, this whole Tua concussion thing, you know, would not have happened if it had not been for that week three game where Tua got hit by, I believe it was Milano. If Milano had been ejected for, uh, from the game for that hit, you know, this could have been a totally different ballpark thing. You know, and I get it. You know, you're not 100% sure that he actually was concussed in that game, even though he was wobbly. And I get that. You know, you can't prove that fact. And unless you can prove that fact otherwise... You know, you, you just can't prove that fact that he was concussed in that game. But my point is, is this, is, you know, the Bills claim that they're the best team around. Well, that may be, that may be true right now, but here's the thing. The only reason why they got there is because they play dirty, they play physical, and they play hardcore football, you know. You know, and there's nothing necessarily bad about that. The only thing that bothers me is that they play dirty, they're proud of it, and they've openly admitted this. And every time we play the Bills, the Bills always try to take a cheap shot on one of our players, whether it be Tua or whether it be one of our other players. Now, granted, Buffalo, they didn't in this last meeting that we had. But still, every single game, it seems like whenever it's Miami versus Buffalo, Buffalo always tries to cheap shot one of our players. True fact. You know, now, now this last concussion, you know, that Tua just suffered, you know, on Christmas against Green Bay, I, I think they, they now said that he had suffered the concussion, but they don't know exactly when it happened, and he wasn't showing any signs in the game, so that's why he wasn't pulled, which is understandable, you know, but, you know, it, it wasn't that bad of a hit, you know, you know, the injury could be worse, it could be less than what it appeared, you never know, you just don't. You know, but from my perspective, it, I don't think it was that severe of a hit. You know, it could be severe. You, you just don't know. But, you know, I'm sick and tired of people saying that Tua should retire, that Tua sh should hang it up before he hurts himself badly. Well, you want to know what? 
Tua is the one who makes that decision, not you. If Tua wants to retire now, that's his choice. If he wants to play another 10, 15 years and try to hold up and continue to play and be tough as nails like a lot of good players are, that's up to him as well. You know, you know, you can you can say whatever you think, you know. And yeah, I understand, you know, that there are certain things that are in his control and out of his control, and you know, and I get that. You know, but you also got to understand, though, too, that Tua is a good quarterback, and the stats don't lie. He's thrown 25 touchdown passes this year, and I'm going to tell you right now, right now, if Tua had played this whole season, had not gotten injured, he probably would have had at least almost 40 touchdown passes this year. You know, and not only that, but him being robbed of the Pro Bowl is a joke. It really is. You know, and all Miami needs to do to make the playoffs so that way Tua can prove to everybody that he belongs. All we have to do is beat New England here on Sunday. Um, yeah, Teddy Bridgewater is going to be at quarterback for this game on Sunday, but it is what it is. You can't control that. I think we can win that game. I'm not making any guarantees because every time I do it, I get my hopes up and it does not end well for me. But um, I think Miami can win that game. Um, it's a winnable game, even though it's on the road at New England. Um, you know, so if we win that game and then the Jets lose to the Seahawks, we're in the playoffs. Okay? That's all we have to do to make the playoffs. If we can accomplish those two things, if those things happen, we win and then the Jets lose, we don't have to worry about risking putting Tua out there for weeks at, for week 18. And then we can keep, rest him another week for the playoffs. But, you know, if we win and the Jets somehow win, then we're going to need Tua for week 18 in order to make the playoffs. So, it, it, it's, it's one of those things where it just, you know, and, you know, I like where the direction of this offense is going. I like the direction of this team. We're close. We're close. But everybody has got to sit down, shut the uh, uh, shut the blank up, and has got to swallow their pride and and just look at it this way. We'll be we'll be we'll we'll be we'll win a championship here sometime probably within the next five ten years. That's realistic. But I wasn't planning on it this year. What I was planning on this year was getting to the playoffs and then build off of that. So you know. And again, if the Dolphins don't make the playoffs, it's no big deal. You know, I have more than one team that I root for, you know, you know, in the postseason. So my other teams that I like, too, they'll be getting in the postseason. So I'll root for those teams, too. But I'm a Dolphins fan. I'm a diehard Dolphins fan. And you will never see me root for another team except for the Dolphins, you know, outside of maybe some teams that, you know, that I root for if my team doesn't get in the playoffs because, you know, I like to watch the playoffs and I like to watch the Super Bowl. And I think it's always kind of cool to have a team to root for, even if it's a team that you don't necessarily follow all the time. So, um, you know, um, what I can tell you is this, you know, I believe in Tua. I think Tua has the makings to be a pro football hall of famer. And not only that, but Tua is a legend. And if any and if you can't seem to understand that, guys, and if you can't seem to accept the fact that Tua is our quarterback, you don't deserve to be a fan of this team. Okay? And you know, there's one person that I watch every single chance that I get. Now I'm not always able to watch this person, but this person is always on point and to the thing. And you may not like what he has to say. But I still encourage you to look up this guy if you haven't. Barry Cunningham. He's got a channel called Fanfare with Barry Cunningham. He does a bunch of Tua Tonga Vailoa videos, a bunch of Miami Dolphins videos. You know, he is a legend. And he knows his shit, okay? And I'm sorry for my profanity. But he knows his stuff, okay? He knows his stuff. You know, if there's anybody who knows football, it's him. He used to play football, okay? So he can tell you from a player's perspective, you know, 
he can tell you from a player's perspective, you know, that he's got these, you know, you know what it, what it is to be a coach. You know, he each coach is different, each player is different. You know, and he brings that perspective in there. So, I I think you know you should really watch him. He's a he's a cool guy, uh, Barry Cunningham. He brings up a lot of good points, and you know, and he's always presenting fact with stats, and he's always backing everything he says up with fact, and that's what I like about it. You know, you guys can listen and watch and follow whoever you want to, but that's up to you. Okay. But as for me, I'm a Dolphins fan, okay? And as far as I'm concerned, Tua is the quarterback for this team. Tua will be the quarterback for this team moving forward. And Tua will win us a Super Bowl, okay? I'm co I'm confident. Now, do I think that that could happen? Yeah, it could happen. Could it not also not happen? Yeah, and I, you know, and I understand that, and I'm not going to hold my breath. But, but... It's a thing called hope. As long as you have hope, and as long as you have confidence in your team, a lot can happen. And you guys have got to understand that. Okay? Because I'm sick and tired of everybody saying that, Oh, well, Tua, he, uh, he can't play. He's too small. He keeps getting injured all the time. So what? Okay? Look at Drew Brees. He was undersized. Did he have a good... And he had injury issues. Did that stop him from playing? No. You want to know something else? You, you name... I want... I, I dare everybody to do this. Just, 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 just... Name one quarterback or any player that you have heard of that has not... That has had more than two, concu two or more concussions within a... one. One year time period that is immediately retired. You tell me. It's because these guys are motivated to play. These guys make the decisions on their own to continue playing whether or not. You know. And I don't necessarily condone. You know that. But also at the same time I also respect that. You know. If they want to play football. And they want to continue to get the crap knocked out of them. And play really good football, that's their choice, you know, so I'm sick and tired of people telling er telling everybody that Tua needs to retire, that Tua is putting himself at risk, you know, if he is, that's his choice, you know, he has that choice as a human being, you know, he, if he wants to continue playing, and he's medically able to continue playing, he's going to continue to play, just saying, you know, so, you got, the, the Tua haters have got to wake up. You guys have got to stop. You have got to stop with this crap, okay? I always believed in Tua when he got drafted out of Alabama. I, you know, and I used to, and I used to have a lot of respect for Coach Brian Flores, but then, all this stuff with the whole Tua stuff, him trying to sabotage Tua, I lost respect for that coach. Brian Flores is a wombat, okay? And that's putting it mildly, okay? And we got rid of that wombat, okay? We've now got a guy who's got class, swagger, and intellect that has gotten the most out of Tua. And that's Mike McDaniel. And you know what? Just because we, we've had a bad year this year, doesn't mean that that is Tua's fault or Mike McDaniel's fault. They're, football is a team sport, and it doesn't matter what happens. If you win as a team, you win as a team. If you win a football game, you win. If you lose a football game, you lose. You win as a team, you lose as a team. That's it. Yeah, a player may have contributed, you know, may have had a deciding co contributor to the result either way, but does that mean that they're solely responsible for a win or for a loss? No. You know, so just get cut to us uh, some slack, okay? Just do it, please. That's all I ask of you. Okay? 
Now, um, because we have this big game against the uh, Patriots coming up, and uh, I'm in the festive mood, uh, stick around. I'm going to do a little quick uh, uh, Dolphins little uh, pep rally for you, and then I'll uh, hang up with you guys, okay? Stick around. What's up, guys? I'm back. Check this bad boy out. It's a little vintage thing. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The Miami Dolphins, guys. That is what I'm talking about. And, uh, I don't know if you saw it. Let me get close enough to the thing here. I don't know if you'll see it, be able to see it or not. No. Hold on, let me grab it for you. I thought you guys could see it, but I was wrong on that. Check out this bad boy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. A Finn's helmet, guys. Yeah, I actually received this as a graduation present in high school, so yeah, you better believe it. Now, I'm not going to put it on because it does not fit my head, so... Thanks for asking. Uh, thanks anyways, guys, for asking, but I ain't gonna wear it, because it don't fit my head. But, <clears throat> I will say this, as you can see, because I'm wearing my Finn's shirt. I just got one little thing I want to say before we go is, Go Finn's go! Go Finn's go! Go Finn's go! Go Finn's go! And in the immortal words of Kevin Harlan from the Miami Ravens game, this year, where Tua had six touchdown passes, he goes, he goes, <clears throat> Tua, he's going, he's looking deep, he, he's got Hill, he, he's got him, he's got Hill, that is six, and Miami is back in business, 48 yards, woo, <laughs> yeah, that's what he said, okay, it, it and you want to know something? We'll see more. That was just a small sample size this year, guys. Just imagine next year. We're going to hear a lot more calls like that where Tua's throwing 40, 60, 70, 80, 90 plus yard bombs to Tyreek and Jalen Waddle. Okay. Now, Trent Sherfield has been pretty good too. River Craycraft as well. I would love to see Miami try to get a wide receiver three next year, a, 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 you know, really good solid option. Because I think it'd be, I think it'd be awesome if we did that. Because I think that'd make that offense even better. So that's just my opinion, though. So, anyways, I'm gonna end this video on a positive note. Um, singing the Miami Dolphins a fight song. So, um, if you're if you're new to this channel and you like this video, please subscribe. Um, this is a this video is a, is going to be in a new series that I'm starting called um, Dolphin Chat or not Dolphin Chat because uh, that's already taken I guess let's just call this the Dolphin Zone so, okay so um, I'm gonna try to get on here once a week to talk about the Miami Dolphins so because they're my favorite team in the world so so yeah um so yeah so I'm gonna Saying AG with the Miami Dolphins fights on before I go. Okay, guys? Miami has the Dolphins, the greatest football team. We run the ball from goal to goal like no one's ever seen. We're in the air, we're on the ground, and you're always in control. And when you say Miami, we're talking Super Bowl, because we're the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins number one. Because we're the Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins number one. Miami has Dolphins, the greatest football team. We run the ball from goal to goal like no one's ever seen. We're in the air, we're on the, we're always in control. And when you say Miami, you're talking Super Bowl, cause we're the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins number one. We're the Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins, number one.
See you guys around. Go Dolphins, and let's destroy the Patriots on Sunday, okay? See you guys around. Thank you.